This lecture snippet is part two in looking at the logical cluster number and the virtual cluster numbers of my MFT record. And in the previous video, we took a look at the data attribute. We looked at extracting that information out, the LCN and VCN information. In this video, I actually want to make sense of all this data that we have here. And so starting with the LCN, you can see that I've pulled this information out. In red, I've highlighted the bytes that are going to represent the information for how many clusters we have and then you'll see that in blue I am indicating the actual LCN or VCN information itself and so the 3 one indicated that one spot would be for the number of clusters the 3 would indicate that there are three spots for the actual LCN number itself and I've all the way down here the last record is slightly different in the fact that it actually has two spots that represent how many clusters we'll have and then the 3 lets me know that the following three spots are going to indicate the actual VCN information. And so I went ahead, it's fairly simple, taking this information, one, converting it over from hexadecimal over to decimal, I'll get a one, and I'll keep going through here, and you'll see that the one zero actually is 16, because one zero in hexadecimal is 16 in decimal. And then I come down to this last one, the AC00, this is in little Indian format, so I actually have to reverse the order of the numbers here, 00AC for the hexadecimal value and if I convert over AC from hexadecimal to decimal I will get 172 or 172 clusters are going to be located at this particular VCN and so let's go ahead and take a look at converting some of the other things that we have here like the actual LCN itself 2FEE01 is what represents the LCN now I'm going to go ahead and take that little Indian format convert it over to hexadecimal format and then convert it over to decimal and I'm going to find that at cluster 126,511 I'm going to find this actual file, the non-resident file itself. Now I can't search by clusters using hex edit which is what I've been using in these videos I can search by sectors and so what I'll need to do is I'm going to convert from clusters over to sectors and a sector is going to typically be 512 bytes and then there are multiple sectors within a cluster and we can find that information by looking at our hard drive and looking at the boot sector of our hard drive actually it's sector zero the very first sector of our hard drive and I can look down here and see that I've written out that at offset B and C I'm gonna find out the information of how many bytes actually belong to a sector and then at offset D I'm gonna find out how many sectors belong to a cluster so what the actual operating system sees as a cluster how many sectors fit in that so if I go back to Ubuntu and I'm in Ubuntu now and I'm gonna go ahead and look at the terminal and I'm gonna go ahead and type in the sudo hex edit I'm gonna use the dash s for sector view forward slash dev forward slash sd b1 and I'll go ahead and type in my administrative password and you'll see that I'm beginning here on this NTFS partition itself. So at offset B and C, I'm going to go ahead and highlight those for you right now. This is going to be B and that will be C. That of course is in little Indian format like most of the things that we deal with. And if I take the 0002 and switch them around so it's 0200, it would be the hexadecimal value of 200. If I, now if I converted that over to decimal I would find that that number represents 512 in decimal. So 512 bytes make up a sector. The following number, offset D, is going to tell me how many sectors belong to a cluster. And you can see that I've got the number 8 there. And so I have 8 sectors per cluster. So let's go back to that spreadsheet. And in the spreadsheet, you'll see that I went ahead and took the cluster number and just multiplied it by 8 to figure out what sector it is that I'm looking for. And so if I go to this sector using the hex editor, I should find my file, my non resident file. So let's see if we can actually find it. It's going to be at the 1,012,088. So we'll go back to Ubuntu, back to the hex editor, and since I'm in sector view, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and I can actually look for that particular sector. So that sector was 1,012,088. And if I hit enter, I can see some information is listed here, but the most important part is I can actually see the text that was in my file. And I had part of that information in the MFT record because it was at one time a resident file and then grew too large and now is a non-resident file and I can see this file name has spaces in it this is some of the same information that I found in the MFT record so I'm actually in the right spot and I found the right sector I'm gonna go back to the spreadsheet and you'll see that there is one cluster located in this spot which means I have eight sectors total that make up this information once I get to the end of this sector my file jumps around. It's because my hard drive is slightly fragmented and the file is located in different spots of my hard drive. 
And what we'll use now from this point on are VCNs or virtual cluster numbers that are relative to the previous location. And so when I convert this over, the 3E5612, you can see that I have that in little Indian format. If I come over here, that's what it is in decimal, and I convert it over from hexadecimal to decimal, you'll find that I get 1,201,726. Now, I'm going to have to convert this over to a signed number. And so what, what I mean by that is, we're going to have to split up the possibilities that we have into both positive and negative numbers. The negative numbers would indicate that I actually have to move closer to the beginning of my hard drive to find the rest of the clusters. If it's a positive number, it means that I'm moving further along in my hard drive in a different location uh, for the actual file itself. And so the number that I get when I converted it to decimal is 1,201,726. If you come down here, we can see some different information. I have to know how many bits make up this number that I have. And if I look up here, I can see that three bytes make up that data. Three bytes indicate 24 bits. And so if I come down here, each one of these represents 8 bits. So I've got 24 bits. And if I look at my 24-bit number, what I've done was if I've taken 2 to the 24th power, that'll tell me the number of possibilities that I can have for numbers. And I have 16,777,216. And what we do when we convert it to a signed number is we say, let's split it in half. The first half are going to represent positive numbers. The second half are going to represent negative numbers. And so this number that I have here, 1,201,726, falls within the positive numbers. And if it's positive, you just leave it, leave it as is. If it was negative, and it was over this 8,388,608, we would actually have to take the number that we had in decimal and subtract from that 16,777,216, and we would find the negative value of that number. And so we're going to go through and see there are a couple that are in red that are negative, but in this particular case it is positive. So what I'm going to do is from the cluster number that I had before, from the LCN, I'm going to add the 1,201,726, and I'm going to get 1,328,237. So that's the new cluster number. That's where my file continues. And if I multiply that by 8, that tells me the sector number itself. And so if I go back to Ubuntu, I should be able to find that sector. And so I'm back here. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And I'm going to type in that 10,625,896. And if I hit enter, I'm going to see here, and if I actually scroll up just a little bit, you'll see that the next sector is completely empty with full of zeros. When I come down to this sector, I'm in all in Fs. And that's because the photo that makes up most of the data on this file is actually white. And you can see part of the background information for it. And this belongs to that photo. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the spreadsheet. And we're going to see if we can keep finding the rest of this file. There were actually three clusters here, meaning there are 24 sectors in total that are going to be located there. If I come down here, when I get to the end of this cluster, I'm actually going to come to the next section, the next VCN information, and I'll find that just one byte or eight bits of data are going to make up the actual cluster number. And You see that I have the BB. If I converted that over to decimal, I would get a decimal value of 187. Now 187, we're going to have to go back and see if this is a positive or negative number. 187 is going to be an 8-bit number because I'm using just one byte to come up with this number. So if I come over here to the 8-bit number, I'll see that the possibilities that I have for numbers is only 256, 2 to the 8th power. 0 to 127, half of that is going to be positive. 128 to 255 is going to be negative. 187 is larger than 128. So I'm going to actually have to take the 187, subtract from that 256 and I will get a negative value of 69, which tells me that I actually have to come 69 spots closer to the beginning of the hard drive to find the rest of my file. And so you'll see here that the previous cluster number was 1,328,237, and I am now, for the second cluster number, I'm going to look 69 spots closer towards the beginning of the hard drive, and I will find the rest of my file. And I'll keep doing this process through all of these VCNs, and you can see some of these numbers are going to be 8-bit numbers, if there's just one byte that makes it up. In this case, there are three bytes, and so this would be a 24-bit number. In this case, there will be two bytes, so this would be a 16-bit number. And you can see that some of these are negative, like for instance, this positive 51,000 that I have here in 16 is larger than the half here. So it's actually going to be in the negative values. And I would have taken 51,016, subtracted my total number of possibilities, 65,536, 
and I got a negative value of 14,520. And so I'm actually moving closer and closer to the hard drive. And you repeat this process all the way through until you get to the very end of your file. And you'll see at the very last VCN information, I actually have 172 clusters, which is quite a bit larger than the rest of these files, 172 clusters that will make up the last bit of my file. And you can see this information here. So this concludes converting the VCN and the LCN to actual cluster numbers or sector numbers on my hard drive and being able to find the parts of my file that are on my hard drive.